I don't know what it was. He's walking upright like a man. Sightings in and around Vermont. Bigfoot sightings across New England have been reported. Red glowing eyes, about seven feet tall. Red eyes, big old fang claws coming out through three inches long, you know, just sharp as they could be. There has been another UFO sighting flying over the Royal Botanic Gardens. There are 500 UFO sightings in the world every month. The truth is out there. Okay, I hope that was recording. What? That sound you just made. I was recording. Okay, because that is going to go into my folder of John sounds. <laughs> yeah? Yeah. Uh, God. Which I forgot I had until you made that sound. I was like, oh, I've got a folder of just John sounds. I hate that that exists. I know. It's you can probably great. make a soundboard out of my voice, out of my sounds. I could probably make another soundboard and play a Kenku and have fully, like, regular conversation. Using just my voice. Using just your soundboard. That would be so upsetting. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> get a, make a text-to-speech program. Get a text-to-speech program, but replace it with my voice. <laughs> oh, there's... I, I, I forgot what it's called. There's a... um. You know how there's, like, the deep fake videos? There's yeah. a software where if you hear... It'll listen to a person's voice Mm -hmm. long if you give it – I forget how long, but it needs a certain length of just an individual speaking. And then you can make it say anything. You can just – it's a text to voice, but it'll mimic anybody's voice. Cool. I hate it. I hate everything. Who was it? There was um, a rapper. I forget who it was. (coughs) But he also on Spotify puts versions with just a cappella where it's like just his voice. So they loaded this guy's stuff. Mm-hmm. into it and then i guess there was some like weird um like a right wing guy posted some crazy shit onto reddit once so they made him mm-hmm. basically in that guy's voice say the th- thing the crazy guy said and then he tried to sue them but the, they were just like nah you can't what was that called was it, was it like banana like banana or something like that or or pine i think it was named after a fruit i'm just going to say a banana voice Fake <laughs> rapper. Uh, no. Maybe it wasn't. Maybe it wasn't banana. No, oh, I'm dying. Hey, Trax, how's it going? Uh, do uh. It was Jay Z. It was the uh Jay Z. Wait. <laughs> I thought you said it was like a SoundCloud rapper. No, he just also uploads acapella. Oh, um, okay. Versions of his tracks to like it's like Spotify or SoundCloud or something. Now, now Jay Z is yeah. a SoundCloud rapper. It's yeah, it's yeah. all it's all. I don't know. Yeah, so they made Jay Z say some like crazy shit, and then he. <laughs> oh, Jay Z was the person who was saying the crazy shit. No, no. So Jay Jay Z never said crazy shit. But yeah, no, no, no. That's what I meant. Process like, his. They they fed this program his voice for long enough where you could, it'll anything you typed in, it would sound like Jay Z actually said it. There's some real ethical. Climbs. And now, and now that there's they do that with because everyone's seen the videos where they do that with the videos. So now, like you can fully fake a v- video and person's voice. I love being post truth. Oh that's great. yeah, everything is awesome. Everything is awesome. We should do a sync. Yeah, we should probably sync. So, three, two, one. Oh, let's do it. Yeah, I'll, I'll light them up later. Oh, yeah, my cough is... I'm dying. Oh, yeah. Mm. Oh. So, I don't oh. want to... I'm not going to go into details on the podcast about what happened. Uh, but my ex- therapist... There was an incident at the Snaily Gaster Pit. Yeah. You, you my, come my... out relatively unharmed. We just need yeah. that finger to grow back. Yeah, my therapist is describing it as uh, adventures in psychic pain. So, yep. <laughs> <laughs> it's that that sounds like Stephen King's next novel. Yeah, I, I, my I love my therapist because he's basically he's basically me, but different. You, but di- that's that's good. I mean, that's kind of what you hope for with a therapist. Yeah, 
because uh, you need common ground to make it actually be like common ground with the therapist is really important. Um, we end up talking about movies a lot. It's it's kind of weird. Oh, do you see there's a new Borat? I did, and I can't believe that anyone was tricked. There's some people were tricked, which I th- f- funny. <laughs> like, yeah. I, I like that. But also, like, there's from the trailer, he had a couple different disguises, and he has a daughter. So I think the, with the, the daughter disguises is great. and the daughter, that's how I, I think they're going to play a larger part of the movie because it's going to be harder to pull off Borat. Well, it's like, like what was that? Borat. Bad Grandpa? Kind of reminds me of Bad Grandpa. Yeah. I liked Bad Grandpa. Man, is it's weird that, like, that era, that was an era of, like, people going around and like there were just movies of people going around and pranking people in yeah. character there's like, that was another a time another one that never came out because um i think it was uh, he talks about it a little bit <clears throat> I'll, I'll i'll just say it. so eric andre has a movie like that that was gonna release earlier this year and for some reason there's trouble it was going to be on Netflix. I'm not – well, there was something on Netflix for Eric Andre recently. But that was, was a stand-up comedy special. special. Yeah. Yeah. It was going to be another one where he has to, like, for some reason go on a road trip across the country. Um, yeah. And he, he, he described it in some detail on something I saw on the I wonder, internets. I wonder how horrifying that was if, if it can't – because Eric Andre is a horrifying dude. There's I mean, he's hilarious. Horrifying shit. He does some like the there was the one video where he was like destroying his set and then Tony Hawk started beating the shit out of him with a skateboard. Yeah. <laughs> I thought we were friends, Tony. Uh there there's uh there's some stuff for sure. He describes some of it like he goes into like a bar and like stages something. Like there's one person the staff know and there's one actor and outside of that all the patrons are normal. And like, like some guy was like stabbing him, like like a biker like kills him or something, or like he keeps, oh, and there's just like blood spraying everywhere. I don't know. I don't, it's been a while since he talked about it, but uh, it sounded super interesting. God, Eric Andre is just a horrifying man. He just yeah. he commits to bits in a way that I just I could never. <laughs> Yeah, and it's really, it's different. Like, it's an avant-garde kind of comedy. Yeah, like Legalized Ranch. Yeah, like Legalized Ranch, he's the Charles Mingus of comedy, which is a reference (laughs) I think almost nobody will get. Unless they're into, like, jazz pianists. God. That's horrifying. (laughs) Oh, man. I, I... I am no good at that kind of like that. That requires too much social skill for me. Yeah. Um, Cause like, that's like, that's like you go around the loop on social skill where you're like so good at social that you can be bad at it. Yeah. If that makes sense. Like, like you have to be so good at socializing with people that you're okay with socializing deliberately poorly. Oh yeah. <clears throat> like, I've always been, I, I'm bad at socializing. When I do socialize, I like to be, it to be like around a lot of people, but only talking to a couple of them. See, I have and this we're problem. In the corner, and we're talking shit about all of the other people. Yeah, I pretty much, I pretty much, if I can't have a co- like predict the out the like flow of the conversation a priori, I feel very, very anxious in social situations. Yeah, oh, not they, great. Uh, I also just leave. Like that that's me. I I I just go I leave. Well, see, here's the problem for me. I want to just leave, but then I feel guilty. Oh. Cuz I'm a I, guilt monster. That's my problem. There's been a number of occasions where uh someone ha- like has found me like after a a party or hanging out and they're like, "Hey, what happened? Like you, like we couldn't find you." And it's like, "Yeah, I, I left." <laughs> they're like, "You and they're like, "You didn't say anything?" I was like, no, I just, I just left. So my thing turned into how I got around that because I realized it was it was a problem for other people. They didn't like it that I would just disappear because I'd like I'm going home now. Um, I would tell one person. <laughs> I would t- I, 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 on my way. I, I I make I tell one person that I left, and it's their responsibility to inform other people that I have left. That should they start to look for me. 
So if somebody it, says, where's Brandon? So eventually it'll make it to this person and they go, he left. So you're definitely going to be the type of person who just like one day disappears. And everyone's like, what happened to Brandon? Fuck if I know. Here's some grainy, here's some grainy Walmart footage of him from the last <laughs> time anyone saw him. <laughs> I had that I had that feeling uh last night cuz I was like I was I was doing some some stress driving just to kind of get my mind off the world. Um and I stopped at a Walmart and I saw myself in like the closed circuit thing and I'm like man, I'm probably going to be the type of person that that's the last like image of me that exists. Oh, there's going to be an unsolved mystery where we would just see you with your hat and like a grainy CCTV. It, like there's like I have no doubt that that's going to be the 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 thing. Like I'm going to definitely end up on an unsolved mysteries one day. Oh or yeah, something like that. That's I've just kind of come to terms with it. Yeah, it's not that I'm antisocial or I don't like being with people. I just I just have that thing where I'm just going to be the person who disappears, and, and there's going to be a mystery. And really, I don't even know what it's going to be. I'm just going to be gone probably fall through a fucking wormhole at this rate there's like it's there's gonna be this weird grainy seat like video footage of you no one's gonna see you for 27 years Mm -hmm. but in that time period there's gonna be like this like designer brand that explodes from like chechnya (laughs) chechnya is where i go and it's just some mysterious designer no one's ever heard of and then at some point, this designer like goes down the runway, and there's gonna be like the face reveal, and it's you. You're gonna be like a, a a mystery like clothing designer. Will I have that blue steel unlock though? Yes. Will I be able to stop flying uh, flying uh, throwing stars midair? I I believe you will. Okay. I believe you will 100 percent be able to do that. <laughs> I I don't think I'm attractive enough for that to pull that off. <laughs> You don't have to be. <laughs> have you seen any of the people that own clothing brands? True. I mean, what's his name? Uh, Will Ferrell in uh, Zoolander. His Mugatu is a uh, individual. Oh, yes. I hate that I remember that name. Mm. <laughs> I hate that That's, I remember that name. I'm surprised you have that unlocked, too. There wasn't even a pause or a, like a... Huh, what's that guy? You just threw it out there. It's just it was there. It was ready for the taking. You and just I hate distributed that. that information. <laughs> I, I kinda hate that that was like like there's stuff that I wish I could pull up like that quickly that is actually valuable to like my life. Yeah. That I can't. <laughs> but meanwhile, Mugatu I pull up in three seconds. Yeah. <sighs> I miss Will Ferrell. He was, like, in everything for a while, and then he disappeared. I miss Will Ferrell, and someone needs to tell Adam Sandler to just stop it. Honestly, here's the thing. I appreciate Adam Sandler's hustle. He he has a solid hustle. Like, he just cranks out movies and puts his friends in them. Like, every Adam Sandler movie has the same group of people in it. Well, that's the point. His hustle is literally... I pay for my vacations with my movies. Like I get yeah. free vacations with my movies. That's that's his hustle, and I respect it. And then like every so often he puts out a good movie, like Uncut Gems or what have you. Yeah, I think at this point I don't <sighs> see. I don't know if he, if you put out enough content, eventually on occasion some of it will end up being okay. Like Cryptopedia. No, I... So <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Fair so enough. I don't know if um if the good movies are good on purpose. I think or if they are. They were gonna be an Adam Sandler movie and they ended up being good because it's gonna happen eventually. I, I think they were because their tone their the tone of those movies is so different. Oh, okay. Cause like like grown ups in Uncut Gems have like completely different vibes. Yeah. True. So it, it it it's it's one of those things where I think the vibe matters. One of my dad's favorite movies is Grown Ups Two, and that face is the reaction I made when he got really excited about like like he's got it on DVD. Two. Like he wanted it for Christmas like one year I think. Grown Ups Two. The sequel, yes. I could understand Grown Ups One because like it wasn't an obvious like it was an obvious crash cash grab, but it was like. 
an original IP. Grown Ups 2 is like the cash grab 2.0. We're coming for you. Yeah. Yeah. It's like Paul Blart Mall Cop 2. Like, it's, it's Grown Ups 2 was gr- the first one made enough money back where they thought if we make another one, then it might not, it won't, they, they don't think they expected it to make as much, but I think they expected it to make as much as whatever an Adam Sandler movie usually they does. They expected it to break even. Yeah. Which in, which in terms of Hollywood accounting is doing really well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah. Speaking of Cryptopedia, we should probably start doing that because we're at 15 minutes talking about bad Adam Sandler movies. Yeah, so welcome to Cryptopedia, an exploration of the myths and legends that haunt the human mind. Each week, we'll take you on a journey exploring the mysteries of the world, tackling the tales of monsters, folklore, the paranormal, and that thing that definitely lives under your bed. I'm Brandon. I'm John. And, uh, yeah, we talk about monsters and stuff, and, well, and sometimes in Adam Sandler movies. I was going to make um, a joke, but I was staring into the void of Adam Sandler. They, ugh, gross. His it's, it's, all no, slimy. it's it's definitely gross. Uh, what's his name? Uh, Rob Schneider's in there. It's it's weird. <laughs> yeah, it's a problematic individual. Uh, <laughs> uh, let's see. This week's creature was first seen in 1973. It's humanoid in appearance. It roams the Isle of Wight just south of England and is no longer seen today. It was only seen once. Uh, to, I'll be a little bit more specific. Do you have any guesses about which creature we are talking about? Uh, David Tennant in a ski mask. No, that's kinky. Um, Just no. a ski mask. Just a ski mask. <laughs> yes. it, it, like, for like the people at home, characters. if that wasn't obvious, it was just a ski mask. You yeah. guess where he was wearing it. <laughs> um, today we're talking about Sam. 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 So Sam Wise. Just Sam. Did, did you see? Did you see the? So on re, on on YouTube, I uh, sometimes get really weird videos, and it yeah. was um, every time Sam takes a step in the Lord of the Rings. Uh, it plays the portion of the movie where he's like, uh, this is the farthest I've ever left the Shire. <laughs> <laughs> so the movie was 10 hours long. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> so not much. So honestly, not that much longer than the uncut version, but you know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so Sam was first written about. Oh, I hate it. In, in Bufora, which is the British UFO Research Association. Volume 6, issue 5. 1978 titled ghost or spaceman the author was using I feel fake like names for children I, who 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 he, were reported so i feel like there's more options than ghost or spaceman but continue okay. I, I feel like i feel like he's i feel like the author is um committing pretty hard to the supernatural in this one yeah uh so it says fake uh, which is like the fake name they gave the kid, was near Lake Common, uh, Sandown, on a Tuesday afternoon about 4 o'clock with a boy about her own age when they both heard a weird wailing noise not different uh, from an ambulance siren. Okay. They followed it across the golf links through a hedge leading to a swampy meadow adjacent to the little-used Sandown Airport. Okay, I just want to say that that statement is like that is a very Great Britain styled statement right there, like an England styled statement. Because like, first of all, golf golf links. Nobody calls it golf links in America. You call it the golf course. I'm yeah, sorry, it's just the golf course. It's a golf. It's course. just a golf course, a hedge, and then of course you know like. A swampy meadow. I I don't know that. I I, I uh, yeah, it runs out there. It runs English. out there. It's just uh, English. The noise ceased, and as they were crossing a wooden footbridge over a narrow brook, a blue gloved hand appeared from under the bridge, and a strange figure emerged. W- wait, wait, this wait. Fuck what? Up nightmare. <laughs> what? Is this a fucking mighty boosh episode? This okay. So this is like temporally nearest 
the two what would be the two years of whatever the fuck for Cryptopedia. So I decided to I wanted to do this weird like I had a, another episode already written, and this I was is, like, I want to do this weird fucking thing. This is like this is like an episode of fucking. I could literally picture this in my head as an episode of the Mighty Boosh, yeah. right? Uh, like. It, the character would be played by the guy who plays Vince Moon. Uh, always forget his name. Did uh, I just mix up two names? The the black haired guy, the one yeah. who played um, Noel old Fielding? Greg. No Fielding. Huh? No. No. Yeah. No. Yeah, no yeah. Fielding. Yeah. He also played the goth on the I, the the IT crowd. Yep. Yeah, he would be the one playing the character. Um, for dude, sure. For sure, he would be the one playing the character, and like, I haven't heard anything about Sam yet. But I'm going to assume Sam is, like, this really pale, hyper-effeminate dude who's just talking to these children about, I don't know, this is the 70s, the Beatles, maybe? I, yeah. I don't know. The the uh, So, the figure fumbled with a book, dropped it in the water, then splashed about to retrieve it. Okay, super-duper. This is, like, even more... This is a fucking... This is an episode of the Mighty Boosh. <laughs> this is like I could I, I I feel like I could write a script from just these two sentences that fills out a whole episode of the Mighty Boosh. Oh yeah, like this is exactly maybe these these children end up being the writers for it. Um, <laughs> then the two watch the figure enter a metallic uh, hut similar to those used on building sites, except that it had no windows. Um. And it also moved along with a strange hopping motion uh, with its na knees raised high. All right. I'm pretty sure you just watched a, like, deleted scene from an episode of fucking... This is, a like, a land-based old Greg so far. It really is. It really... Well, he's still in the stream, so he's not even fully land-based. <laughs> is this just old Greg? It might just yeah this this one is just old Greg. Is this before he drew the painting of Bailey's as close as you can get it? <laughs> Do you love it me? Might... <laughs> <laughs> I got both parts down there. <laughs> <laughs> Give me my fuzzy little man peach. <laughs> one of my favorite bears. parts is when the guy in the boat's like, "I have so much to live for." <laughs> I watch a lot. Of, I still watch Old Greg pretty regularly. Uh, I I love I love that entire show. The first in the first encounter I had with that was the Crack Fox. Uh, I'm just gonna type in Crack Fox on another tab. I know what it is. I just want to remember to watch it later. <laughs> I love the Crack Fox. It, it's it's because in England, uh, foxes are super common, and. Uh, the urban development uh, negatively impacted that particular fox, we'll just say. <laughs> yep. Uh, the children wandered off and were over 50 yards away when the figure, um, fr when, and, and the article said, from now, which will be referred to as he, uh, reappeared carrying a uh, black knobbed microphone with a flex, uh, white flex, like a phone cord attached to it. Uh, okay, I want to stop because I just saw the picture. Brandon. That's not what you had in your head. That is literally what I had in my head. Oh, is it? Oh, wow. <laughs> I, I was literally imagining something that looked like that. Like, <laughs> I'm not even joking. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. That, that's... It is like... Oh, boy. I, I really can't drive home the point, people, enough that this literally looks like it's from... And it looks like it's Boosh from Mighty Boosh. It really does look oh, like yeah. Mighty Boosh copped this this aesthetic. Oh yeah. Oh, we'll go more into uh, the the physical description in a yeah. little bit. Well, that's why I didn't go into it. But man, oh man. Oh. Uh, so the wailing noise uh, immediately returned. This time being so loud that the boy was scared and began to run away. The noise ceased. And now the thing that they see spoke into the microphone. And although uh, the children were far away, they could hear his voice as clearly as though he was right near them. Can I, can I do the voice? Sure. <laughs> Hello. 
Are you still there? <laughs> oh, that's that's a perfect voice for him. That's the voice it has. That's the voice it has. Uh he he asked, and in response to what sounded uh, uh, a friendly tone, they ugh, I wouldn't call that a friendly tone. No, it was a friendly tone. They you don't want to hear him. You don't want to hear his voice when it's not a friendly tone. Yeah. Um, they, they ventured close enough to speak to the oddly attired person. Um, he was nearly seven feet tall and had uh, no neck <laughs> for his head. Um, it was, uh, it, it appeared to be wedged straight onto his shoulders. He wore so like a, a Sontarian from, uh, Dr. Who. Yes. Good pull. <laughs> um, I just Good watched pull. an episode of Ashens where he opened like a crate, like a loot box type thing, yeah. and the Sontarian was one of the, like the only good things that was in it. Oh, I just watched Blink again for the first uh, uh, the other day because I just Is wanted that... to watch the first uh, Weeping Angels episode. Oh, okay, and also the chronologically last appearance of uh, uh, River Song. Uh, I don't think she was. In that one. She was in the one that took place in the library. Yeah, she was in that one with the library. She pops in and out. Does she sh- still show up on the show at all? Um, Cause I her, haven't like... seen many of the newer ones, mostly because um, not that I don't like them, but that I don't have that much free time anymore. Yeah, well, the, the thing is, like, um, like... The whole River Song storyline was really cool. Like, don't get me wrong. I thought it was a really cool storyline. Um, yeah. But it definitely had a, uh expiration date. Oh, yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, there was a clear expiration date on that. Just because of the way that it was set up. Like, eventually you would meet them in person. And it also is kind of weird when you think about it. Because, like... Spoilers for Doctor Who. Like, this is, like, an ancient spoiler. These are old. <laughs> like, yeah. This isn't... Like, so, like, the whole the whole thing where he knows her as a child, too, is kind of creepy when you contextualize it. And yeah. he does meet her after finding out, like, that she was this baby that he had encountered. And that makes it kind of creepy. Yeah. But, eh. Yeah. It's still a... I think they, they 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 had it was a challenge for the writers I think to figure out like they at some point knew they had to like drive everything to a, a logical end and it's also Doctor Who so they had you know Doctor Who do something with that also that family got destroyed by Weeping Angels by oh yeah <laughs> like every single every single bad thing that happened to a family member there was because of Weeping Angels. Yeah. <laughs> um so this this uh person wore a yellow pointed hat which interlocked with a red collar on a green tunic. A round black knob was affixed to the top of his hat and wooden antenna were attached on either side. Okay, so I just <sighs> Not all... this definitely sounds like a Mighty Boosh character, but it yeah. also definitely sounds like uh a kid making a making something up from a terrible terrible english doll that existed in their life because there are some bad ones uh maybe i don't even want to look up what english dolls look like that, I, i'm I just feel like I, that'd be a nightmare fuel i just have this this vague feeling that most things in england are very they they, they make some choices <laughs> their choice that's yes <laughs> despite despite having control over most of the world, they chose some of the weird stuff to keep as part like integral to their culture. Like, you know, not using spices in their food. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They went uh yeah, they made some decisions. They had some of the best like they had control over some of the places that had the best food ever. Have you ever had uh, uh oh, they they like You know what? You know what? I here's what I I I submit. I submit that um the English can't cook. And I and I I except I mean, for Jeff Gordon Ramsay. I mean phys- like they physically he 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 was in an accident as a child and it 
broke that part of his brain. Like, okay, there's okay. something about the English where they, they can't physically cook. Even if you teach them, there's, like, something – there's just something – they're not 100% human. But what they can do – what they can do, the English, <sighs> is invade and make colonies. So the English invade um, places that can cook and colonize them. See, this this is that thing where we're doing something that's like vaguely racist, or saying something vaguely racist, but it's like more about they people who live in an area. I mean, they yeah. definitely <laughs> did it, but like there's a degree of racism in what you just said. Xenophobia. True. Xenophobia. Yeah. There we go. That was xenophobia. We'll, we'll leave it at that. <laughs> Um, the face had triangular markings for eyes, a brown square of a nose, and motionless yellow lips. Um, other round mark- markings were on his paper white cheeks. You called it from the for- uh, get go. I told um, you. I know. I know what horrifying English monsters look like. Oh yeah, and a fringe of red hair fell onto his forehead. So that's the oh. scariest part. Okay. Yeah. No. He's. It's a ginger. It's a it's a just a regular ginger. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> wooden slats protruded from his sleeves, uh, and from below his white trousers. This reminds me of um, over the garden wall. Have you ever seen that? No. Okay, so over the garden wall is like, it's a cartoon and it's haunting to say the least. Um, it's got uh, what is his name? Elijah Wood. Okay. In it, he's the main voice actor for the main kid. Um, and it's a really just stunning piece of um, art. And it's only 10 episodes long. I super duper recommend it, um, especially now that we're in the spooky season. Yeah. Uh, because it's like, it's got such a good Halloween vibe to it. It does. I'm looking at some screenshots of it right it's now. It's not even good, Halloween. Good vibes. It has a good autumnal vibe to it. Yeah, yeah. It's, I it's, buy it. It's, yeah. it's it's super stellar. I recommend it to everyone. If you haven't watched it, if you enjoy this podcast, you probably will like it. As a rule. Um. Yeah, there's a lot of uh, very specific things that we talk about, and other people seem to also like them. So yeah, definitely check that out. Oh, and um, Tigtorn. I watched that after you told me about it, and uh, yeah, fantastic that is fantastic, hilarious, it's, one of I the funniest shows watch ever. All of them, uh, but whatever was unlocked on um, that the Cartoon Network website, I watched, and they were amazing. Helpies, I love Helpy so Helpies much. So helpful. I love Helpy so much. Did you? Um, what was the? What was the last episode you watched? It was the uh, the unicorn one. Oh, uh, okay. So you didn't you didn't get to see um, him fight against nothing. I which didn't see is one of... against nothing, or I also saw him fight the sword. Where like the there was a sword and a bloodthirsty kid, but because Tig Torton's an adult, he couldn't. Oh fight yeah, the that kid, whole so he thing. had to turn himself back into a kid, and then he turned into a sword. Yeah, it was that show's weird. It's but weird. It's phenomenal. Helpy's the best. Helpy's pretty great. He's like immortal or something. Yeah. Well, <laughs> like he just like. Ah! <laughs> he just like... Tone, go. <laughs> <laughs> what well, was that on the unicorn? He just like stabbed wings into his body and made him, <laughs> or like he like snap off body parts. <laughs> mm-hmm. oh, he's a so he's a like uh what you call it the those things that were made out of that material that you could like reattached to stuff and what have you i i don't know silly putty no there was like a there was like a toy line so there was a toy line where you could like rip the toy apart and like re-stick it together mr potato head no um, um, this is great uh I, you know what just keep going i'll find okay it. <laughs> uh he wrote in a notebook in a large hand and he, in the book he wrote hello and I am all colors, Sam. So this the, is just another. Uh, this is just another Jeff the Talking Mongoose. Is what you're telling me. Uh, yeah. This is this is basically another Jeff. Because uh, this is this is some Jeff energy. If I've oh, ever yeah. heard it, like 
the the boy was hesitant, but Faye re- read each word as it was pointed to. Um, this was necessary as the words were not laid out in the conventional sequence. So he just wrote words on places in the book and then had to point into what order. Oh no, that's that's normal. Be read in. That's that's normal. Uh, that's normal behavior. There's the children- nothing. There's nothing yeah. strange about that whatsoever. No. Have the you ever children- been to England? That's normal. <laughs> That's true. It's so hard to read the menus in England because none of the words are in order. Yeah, you need to have a translator. Yeah, it's it's just a it's just a fact. You just need a translator. You just need. It's a all translator. English, but you know, it's 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 the Queen's English, which is different. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the children made the right choice, which is they ventured closer and discovered that the creature could talk without the aid of a microphone. Through his lips that didn't move and speech that was uh, unclear, um, uh, like a person who does not open his mouth properly. <laughs> like, like a, a ventriloquist, or like um, the Tin Man from uh, uh, the Tin Man from what's the name of that very famous movie? Wizard of uh, Oz. Wizard of Oz. There we okay. go. <laughs> Our two ha- I was having I, a little brain fart too. Also, I would have jumped in. I would have been faster. It took me longer to remember the Wizard of Oz than it did to remember Mugatu. <laughs> <laughs> I, I that feel just like that's, makes you that's a terrible human. <laughs> that's just kind of an indictment of me. Yeah. As a rule. Uh, he asked the children about themselves, so so they ventured to ask questions about him too. Um, so this is the weirdest first date. Uh, they no, it's a normal first. This is this is normal. This is like step one. Um, yeah. Although usually, generally, dating children's not allowed. Not okay. This is England. Still, even in England. <laughs> I mean, it's unless we're going back to Tudor times, in which case. <laughs> You know, in which case these kids are geriatric. Yeah, <laughs> these kids should have seven kids already. Yeah, they're they they they're they're behind the they're behind, mm. so to speak. They asked about his clothes, which were all ripped, and he told them he had only one set, um, so he could only wear those. Um, because of his strange white features, they asked if he was really a man. Uh, the answer was a chuckle. Wait, wait, wait. yeah, no. <laughs> oh, it's so bad. I hate that voice. <laughs> they asked uh, if he was a ghost, and the vague reply was, Well, not really, but I am in an odd sort of way. <laughs> and then the children asked, What are you then? Uh, they continued, but only obtained the answer, You know, with no further explanation. <laughs> this is like a fucked up Pee Wee Herman. Yeah. This is, <laughs> this is like, I'm imagining Pee Wee Herman meets Tiny Tim. Wait, Tiny Tim the singer? Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. Because that's the voice I'm imagining. That's yeah. that's the voice I'm going for is the, <laughs> you know, that, that like really <laughs> horrifying, like kind of haunting voice that I really don't understand how he was popular. Yeah. Uh, that was like, a thing at one point in time. Was just like creepy music. <laughs> like people well, they, just liked creepy music at one point I, in time. I mean, I think the way our generation pretty much learned about him was because of SpongeBob. Um, because they deliberately used Tiny Tim to be fucking weird as hell. Oh, did they? Yeah. They um. There's like a new SpongeBob series coming out, and what? yeah. So basically. Uh, the creator, Mark Kildenberg, I think is his name, died. Okay. Yeah. Um, and he didn't want them to make more of it. And then the second that he died, Disney, uh, not Disney, Nickelodeon, like, crawled over his grave to make a new series. Oh, yeah. Because, you know, corporation's going to corp. <laughs> Cor- corporation's going to corp. And also, like, SpongeBob is kind of, like, the biggest moneymaker for Nickelodeon ever. Oh yeah, like no, no, uh, that is not even movies, anywhere close TV shows, to an overstatement. Video games. It, it's one of the most recognizable characters from the past like twenty years. Yeah, like not even joking. Like, 
the, the level of notoriety and like just value he is as an IP is kind of understated. <laughs> he beat out Barney. So he, he for sure beat out Barney. They also had David Hasselhoff on SpongeBob. I still that was great. That was phenomenal though. Ah, I got my waveform to look the way I kind of want it to. So if I seemed a little bit better now or louder than before, I have fiddled with the knob. So I'm just going to compress the hell out of it and hopefully u- everything levels out. It's usually good when you're com- when you're fiddling with the knob in the middle of an episode. Yeah, I was I was tweaking it. I still might do a little bit fiddling. I I really should have done it. It, it was more th- how the waveform looked more than how I was I, actually I, being picked up. But you can just I, shift and use the arrow keys, and then it, that'll control how it actually displays the waveform. So this is interesting to exactly zero percent of our listening audience. So let's let's continue with the, the <laughs> this <laughs> with, fucked up creature. With this creature. Uh, he also said he had no name. There were others like himself, though. And he drew a rough sketch of one of them. Uh, he also confided that he was frightened of people and scared they might hurt him. This fragile, fragile giant terror. Uh, I mean, uh, let's be real, though. Like, he he has the right idea. Like, oh, yeah. If If anyone encountered this creature, they would absolutely hurt him. Oh, yeah. I would go buy a dog, train it, and then stick it on him. I mean, this is this is like you're definitely calling CPS. Yes. Uh, apparently, if attacked, he would not fight back. Bullshit. Uh, bullshit. Look at that face. Look at that face with the division symbols on the cheeks. Yeah. That's um, that's the face of a stone cold killer. At his invitation, the children again made the right decision. Yeah. And crawled through a flap into his hut. The these they 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 I blame the parents. <laughs> this I is mean, on, this is on the parents at this point. Well, leaded gasoline too. Oh, I that leaded gasoline theory. You leaded have gasoline all, explains a lot of our problems. So many problems in the world. <laughs> yeah, I hate that. That's my go-to, but like I legitimately like if you look at the the symptoms of leaded gasoline and look at the problems we have in our world, that. <laughs> Like the 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 impacts of having lead poisoning seem to match up pretty good with the general sociopathy that our world has uh, uh, acquired. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the hut was uh, two two levels tall. Oh wow! Uh, split level. The he had a split level hut. Uh, the lower had plenty of headroom and was wallpapered. In blue, green, and covered um, with a, a pattern of dials. It also had an electric heater and a sim- simple wooden furniture. Um, so this is just the weirdo who lived in the neighborhood without anyone knowing. Because <laughs> nothing yeah. that I'm hearing so far sounds like anything that uh, a weirdo... like. Because here's the thing. Not all homeless people are weirdos. But all weirdos are weirdos. <laughs> Yeah, like they they found just like th- that weird guy. They would be like, um, oh, what's his name? Oh, Uncle um, Uncle Willie. So it'd be like if Uncle Willie was homeless. From are you talking about from um, Kingston? Oh, okay, okay. He, he he like owned a bar and then it closed. But then every time there was a festival, like he would just be the guy that would be on the stage and oh! seeing. Oh, that he, guy, he's this that guy. old guy, but he always dressed in like all crazy colors. And the thing yeah, is, yeah. every time anybody passes him, you have to go, Uncle Willie! And then I guess he also did a lot of acid back in the day. He um, was in, uh, he always was at, um, the uh, Rosendale Street, Street Fest. Fest. Yeah. I saw him in Kingston a few times. And it's like, still with him, like every time he, he walks down the sidewalk and you'll just hear someone be like, Willie! And then like he goes and he passes you, like, hey, Uncle Willie! Like, I know, like his bar probably closed before I was even fucking born. But it's still like, I know the thing is, Uncle Willie! So like, he is, is also a weirdo. Yeah. Um, Which is not an indictment of him. That's just no. a statement of fact. The man is a weirdo. Yeah, they just met the the guy. They just met the guy. They met the um, guy. They, they met the local town weirdo. Yeah. <laughs> the upper level was less spacious and the floor was metallic. Um, 
Okay. He, he told the children that he fed upon berries, which he collected in the late afternoon. So he, maybe the berries he's eating contribute to his weirdness. Hmm. Uh, okay. Like, like they're a poisonous berry that he's become tolerant to. So that's why he acts this way. Hey, kids. Want to try oh. these berries? Oh, <laughs> I don't like that. I promise uh, he, you it won't kill you. He Look at old Sam. Oh. Everything's good here. <laughs> he I did, love him. Oh, he didn't say where, but he did indicate that he had a camp uh, on the mainland that he would go to. <laughs> um, yeah. Sure. Um, he also that's, a, said, that's code for that's code for his uh, his hedge fund office. Oh, this guy's like some crazy CEO. Yeah, like he goes yeah. in like full suit business tie and, and and he wears uh he still wears the wooden slats underneath though the underneath but you would never know and then as soon as he gets in his car um the mask like, goes on. Boom, everything he gets in his like uh burning man outfit and goes to his shack in the woods he's got the he's got the uh tearaway suits yeah uh it's important he also said that the water from the river could be drunk um once uh and he had cleaned it that could be drunk once yeah, so once, once he, he cleaned, cleaned it, like, he had to sanitize it. You got to boil, so, boil that water. So what you're saying is the water from the river can't be drunk. Until you boil it. Which is, that that's that's as good as, because any water, you if you boil it, you can eventually drink it. Yeah. It's just, you know. Um, once inside the hut, he removed his hat to reveal round white ears and sparse brown hair. Wait, Here's my question. What? Where did the red tuft of hair go? Because he removes his hat and his hair is a different color than when his <laughs> hat's on. Did he just have a red tuft of hair, like, stitched into the hat? That's what I'm thinking. <laughs> uh, before eating a berry, he performed an odd conjuring trick. He placed the berry in his ear, mm-hmm. thrust his head forward, and caused the berry to disappear and reappear at one of his uh, eyes. <laughs> Yeah, that's about right. No, that's that's normal. That's how that's, I eat berries. Yeah, uh, you repeat, can't just pop them in your mouth. Repeating the process, the berry traveled to his mouth. Now, this sounds a little bit like a uh, a trick that like the amazing Jonathan would do. So it might just be like a weird guy that that's showing off weird magic. Uh this this parenthetical here, Brandon, you're gonna have to walk me through this. Um, I did not add that parenthetical. That parenthetical is that parenthetical from the original article? Is from the Buffon. That's from the original article. That's a theory that someone is positing. Okay, okay. So I'm going to say it because it's a parenthetical, and I think that I want to just take a minute to say this is why I hate, hate credulous reporting. Um, a possible explanation could be that he was wearing some kind of perfective mask and analyzing the berry to check it wasn't poisonous. What? Yeah. What? <laughs> they, uh, yeah. They, like, uh. Like, okay. Th- these guys, they'll bend over backwards to try to, uh, ex- like, to rationalize batshit crazy stuff. Because cause here's the thing. That's, like, there's so many easier ways to do that than having something that moves an object through a mask, through the ear, out the eye. Yeah, like, th- like from the ear to the eye, and then the eye to the mouth. Like, that's okay. It's a stretch. Uh, it, that's the- it, it's beyond a stretch. Let's be real. Yeah, uh, the children uh, talk to this strange being for an <laughs> for half an hour or more. Then, after saying goodbye, they rushed across the golf course to tell the first man they met that they had seen a ghost. Um, he merely laughed, but the children were convinced of their experience, uh, and that the being was either a ghost or someone dressed up. Doesn't sound like they're very convinced of their experience. No. <laughs> uh, Faye, uh, told her father of the experience, uh, some three weeks later on Phenomenal the 2nd of June. Phenomenal family communication. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Phenomenal communication. Uh, at first, he found the story quite unbelie- unbelievable, but was amazed at, 
at the detailed account and Faye's certainty that it was the truth. Uh, she was quite upset when he'd suggested that she'd made it up uh, or invented it. Uh, Mr. Y uh, saw the boy, and th that's the, the what they're calling the dad, I assume. Okay, okay. Um, but found him uh, not easily easy to communicate with, though he did He's get a, a statement child. from him verifying that he'd seen it too. Um, uh, what the fuck? This is just APG from the fucking article. APG plus. Yeah, that's just from the fucking article. So, uh, okay. Uh, uh, <laughs> so you can ignore that. Uh, make believe or, or other possibilities consider uh, considered included as a shared hallucination and a deliberate hoax by someone. Okay, um, I want to stop you right there. Yeah, where is the hoax in this? I don't know because it's kids. because yeah, like this is this reminds me of like every time that everyone like loses their shit, a kid sees heaven, but it's like exactly the same description of heaven that their parents gave them. Uh, oh yeah, and it's like. Oh, look, it's proof. No, it's proof that you told them that this thing exists and that it looks like this. This yeah. doesn't prove anything. This is just a kid's story. Yeah. So, like, so, so far, yes. Um, yeah. So um, so this thing, is it a, a, a deliberate hoax for somebody? Uh, there was such an extraordinary amount of detail. However, here's the other thing. They, these guys, they think that the more detail there is, the less made up a thing is. That just means somebody made up more stuff. At the At, pot. I mean, actually, the more detail there is, sometimes the more likely it is it's made up. Yeah, because like, that's, that's the a way I would tend. That that's actually a pretty like a hallmark condition of a liar is that they make up more to explain their lie. Detail. They put in too much detail to make it so like, see, look at that. There's no way they're gonna prove that that's wrong. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, there, yeah, so there's <laughs> so much detail, which would, uh, include far, uh, farther to the point that the creature clearly had only three fingers on each blue gloved hand and three toes on his bare white feet, making a deliberate hoax somewhat difficult. Um, and indeed, why go through all that trouble? Because so, so, they're children. Yeah, th that's. <laughs> what? Yeah. Um, <sighs> additionally. Faye claimed that there was a pair of workmen uh, servicing a pole, giggity, uh, near God that and did not appear to notice anything. So, completely imaginary. Yeah, so so she's positing that they went to like some kind of like weird bubble of reality that doesn't, like nobody saw, I guess, is what she's trying to say. I feel like, so I had imaginary dinosaur pets as a kid, because of course I did, because that's yeah. the kind of kid I am. Um... I'm almost positive. I believe that they. I I talked about them as though they were really real. I mean, one time I lost them in a fucking bank of fog while we were driving. Yeah. So like, <laughs> I didn't have dinosaur pets. Yeah. <laughs> um. Oh. Well, uh. Now there are a few ideas. Uh. About. Yeah. Here, here's some other theories and shit. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, the author of the original article uh, wrote that uh, I get the impression that Faye was somehow taken into a bubble of alien reality created by a strange personage. So that's what the author says. Oh, good. And I good. say that um, perhaps there's easier explanations. Other people think that uh, what they met was an alien. Uh, some say more or less it was a pervert in the woods. Um However, I think these kids, they're just full of shit. I think these kids are full of shit. I, I honestly, here's the thing. I think even full of shit is too much to call, like, say. I think they were kids. Yeah, true. Like, uh, <laughs> supposedly the kids kept saying this was real for the rest of their lives. Something I would like to point out is that um, the rest of their lives at this point in time of the article would have been five years, like three years. Like, the rest of their lives is, th is three years. Um, the encounter happened in 1973, but wasn't written about until 1978. Um, but because the kids kept talking about it so much, they eventually reached out to uh, Bufora. Now, here's a little bit of extra backgroundy stuff. Um, okay. Mr. Y, who's the father, um, 
has been in other Bufora articles, so the father sees aliens, and it's not crazy that the kids would have heard some shit from their dad. So, so there, there's a little bit of um, there. So now it's cross it's now even, going on. It's now even more like what I was saying, where a kid sees heaven, and it's a, literally the identical description that their parents have for it. Yeah. Um, the other thing is that the children were kept anonymous in this article and have never been public or said anything. So they're they're um, nobody knows who the, these kids are. So they could possibly just simply not exist. Um, and that's what I thought. Now this this I've written this, I wrote this um, probably like five weeks ago. Um, the mm-hmm. Last week, I was listening to a podcast where people were just talking about their, like, oh, what are some of your favorite, um, like, f- pieces of folklore, or what's your favorite kind of monster, or, you know. Mm-hmm. And someone mentioned um, uh, Many uh, many Colors Sam, and they said, oh, really? Because they're all different, like, people who've, like, podcasts or whatever, found, um, so when he, like, tracked like the like walked like traveled to go find the area and shit which uh, i mean oh, that's, that's that's a lot more of more than i would have cared <laughs> um and he supposedly also found the original girl she's older now like she's like an old lady um and she agreed to do an interview about 60 ha- however she doesn't want to be um she doesn't want her name out there but she she agreed to an interview it hopefully i mean i assume he did his due diligence and like was somehow able to confirm this is the same person that was the girl, and not just some other person saying that they're the person. Um, I there might be a, an I, update with an interview with her, and if that does happen, I'll point you to the podcast. <laughs> Brandon, I literally don't know how he could verify her because the level of verification that's pres like possible verification for this is so skinny that like. Anyone could literally say that they were this girl. I could say I was that little girl. And it has as much weight as anyone else saying it. Because yeah. like the only the only the only factor that would come into play is if you're about 60 and you live it you don't even have to live in that area. You could be in freaking Tucson, Arizona and say, "Yeah, that was me." There's there's <laughs> no there, there's nothing there. Yeah. There's no biographical information about this Fay girl. It's yeah, there there's really no yeah, I don't know how I mean, unless like they were able to like reach out to Bufora, who was then able to go and reach out to these people and then they agreed to allow Bufora to give their information to this individual. Uh they you know. <sighs> There's just things. <laughs> I hate everything. Yeah. All right. So as usual, our website is cryptopediacast.com. Our Instagram is at cryptopediacast. Our Twitter is at cryptopediacast. Our email is cryptopediacast at gmail.com or us at cryptopediacast.com. Uh, we have a Patreon. And let me just check. I don't think anyone's... If you If you started supporting the podcast during an off week, good on oh. you. <laughs> oh, I thought you were going to say I'm sorry thank you <laughs> oh way to spin it <laughs> um, um, oh we do have a discord um, that while you're looking up if there's anything going on on the Patreon I'll, I'll plug the discord that's been fun there is um, yeah it, it gets weirder every single day it does I mean we there's that one time we talked about horse meat and then we had I'm trying to, to get uh, they updated my phone so now like the gestures are a little bit different and it's it's throwing me way off um but a couple people joined the uh the discord there and mm-hmm. uh we learned about oh, gee, oh here's lots of I, I haven't been in general in a little bit you were posting some transformers was uh, I? I don't even remember i posted something about manimal oh yeah we were talking about animorphs and um we were talking about Animorphs, and I really want them to do a gritty reboot of Animorphs in which the skin tears and the bones crack, because I think that would be way cooler. Yeah. Um, 
And then, of course, people had to rain on my parade and say, well, John, it's made for children. They'd never do that. And it's like, yeah, well, here's Manimal. <laughs> there was, Which uh, is two minutes of a man transforming into a panther. Yeah. I, there was a, lot of, uh, uh, a longer than expected chain about, like, the first person to be killed in the colonies because they were caught with doing animal buggery. And they listed, like, the animals that this individual had sex with. It's a lot. It was a lot. There was a lot of buggery going down. There was a lot of buggery. This guy. That's, uh, that's fat. Same dad joke I made. He really knew the ins and outs of animal buggery. Oh, boy. All right. Um, our jackalopes, which who we thank every episode, are Clay Sinclair, Marty Von Party, Bird Schneider, and Jonathan Shepard. What was that video game? I'm drawing a blank. Where Shepard's the last name and there's like... Uh, there's... Mass Effect. Yes. See that? I remember instantly, but I don't remember fucking Wizard of Oz. <laughs> <laughs> yep. If you enjoyed our podcast, be sure to rate, review, subscribe, all that stuff. If you have monster requests or stories, be sure to send them in. Maybe we'll get to them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you could find me on Instagram at donkey underscore hands. My website is boyerb.com. My email is brandon at cryptopediacast.com. My Twitter is at crypto brandon. And if you follow me, I post the right now. It's mostly me fixing my kitchen floor. It is a lot of you fixing your kitchen floor, which I was thinking about the other day. Why didn't you just do um, like vinyl? Uh, instead of tile. Yeah. Well, it, it's it's ceramic filled vinyl, so they're still a little bit flexy, so they don't crack. But you get the benefit of being um, ceramic filled, so they don't they're scratch resistant. They're like industrial. Oh, okay, okay. Kind of tiles. They look. Good. I've got. I had to buy another box earlier this morning, and oh, here's a freaking thing. <laughs> so anyway, whatever. Water damage. Uh, so I pull up all the underlayment. Get all the tile out. I have to pull up all the underlayment because that's water damage, which is like thin, thinner plywood, basically. Mm -hmm. I go have to go buy new to replace that stuff. Uh, get in the car. Look outside. Um, my mailbox is on the ground. So somebody backed into our post. and, sna and it, But it broke under the surface of the ground, so that meant I couldn't frame it up. Um, and here's the other thing. It's not just my mailbox. There's three mailboxes on it because it's shared with the, the, th the three neighbors. Um, mm -hmm. That one post. The, the, I'm the only of the neighbors that's below like 70. So I'm like, okay, this is now uh, Brandon's problem. But it was that was on the day when it was really hot and muggy and human and shitty. So I was like, I'm just going to do put, hammer all the nails and shit into the floor and I'll, and I'll dig that up after this, work th the following day. So I'm halfway done... But like cutting all the wood and laying it down and nailing it down and then i hear tink 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 i look outside this i wrote a thank you card because i'm appreciative and put money in it and i'm gonna give it to him later today but this old fuck <laughs> is out there with a crowbar and a hammer trying to because it was some like cemented in the pole it's so yeah. hot and he's going tink tink just break trying to break up the concrete to I'm like, I'm like, oh, so I'm the bad guy if I don't go out. So I go outside and get the crowbar and, I, and start crowbarring and breaking up all the cement and pull out the post. Uh, so that that happens. And then the thing that happens is um, he goes into his garage and pulls out a new post and mailboxes. What? So in the point, so we, we did, just happened that we both went to the hardware store at the same time. But when I went in my head, fuck that, it's muggy. I mean, I'll do that when the weather's nice. He bought everybody new mailboxes and a post and started, like, digging out the post. Oh, my God. Oh. <sighs> so, I appreciate that. But I was like, I was like, really? Like, it's humid. Like, uh, uh, humid I was doing like, this. I was going to do it. But, God damn it. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> oh. oh. <laughs> it, reminds, uh. <laughs> it reminds me of that joke from... Uh, Malcolm in the Middle, where Hal is like, he's going to replace the light bulb, and he's just fixing everything around the house, and he's outside trying to fix the car, and Lois comes out and is like, the light bulb's out, and he pulls his head out in front of the car, and he's like, what do you think I'm doing? <laughs> John, John, that is, 
Uh, <laughs> Cause so, the chain of events had put him into that. Like, like he was still, it, it was all the stuff leading up to that was so he could fix the light bulb. Can I, can I say something real quick? Yeah. The light bulb in my stairway, the one mm-hmm. that goes to the upstairs, that went out. But you know what happened the day after that light bulb went out? My dishwasher. Thing. Yep. So that exact thing is my life right now. <laughs> <laughs> that exact thing is my life right Phenomenal. now. Like, I'm going to fix the light bulb, but I have to, it's more important that I have to retile the floor. Ugh. Uh, what's I don't know I what happened, the next thing that's but I just break. turned I was just an old curmudgeon well no the next thing is now that the tile's a different color we have to we, we want to repaint the kitchen so hopefully nothing breaks until the kitchen's repainted and then I got a new kitchen table <sighs> I used to be cool <laughs> were you no were we were no. either of us I definitely no. wasn't I mean that's a fact there is there is video evidence of me giving a speech about Doc Brown and Optimus Prime at our graduate, our high school graduation. Here's a question. I, I remember that. I didn't think that's the direction you were going. I thought the direction you were going was the uh, Media Lab or whatever from high school. That too. That too. Does that that's... channel still exist? <laughs> that you uh, created? It was like Group 3 Productions or something like that. What was it called? It was like Group 3 or Group 5 Productions. Group 3 Production. If I... Nope. Maybe it's Group 4. I'll put a it was on Google there. Videos, so was it? I thought it was on YouTube. No, this was before YouTube. No, well, this was like when YouTube and Google Videos were a thing. What um, Google Videos? I, I uh, we'll keep um, video.google.com. Is that searchable? Oh wow, Group Three. This is great content. Yeah, I don't. I don't remember. It was you. I think you were there. I know Steven was there. You were there for some of them. For Steve some of them. Steve was there. Uh, Andy was there. Yep, we Andy did a, was in there. He was, he, was, he was one of the team members. Uh, Alex Wells, if my memory is correct. There. Um, oh, these are all just links to YouTube. Oh, Daily Freeman. So this is a uh, group. Live production? I, dude, I was I don't, really hoping. I literally don't remember, like... There's there's a joke, a Final Fantasy joke there. There's a there's a me pretending to be the stranger from uh, there was uh, from there was a R- lot Resident of Evil Four fun being had and a lot of really bad videos being made. Oh, terrible videos! It was a miracle that we succeed. You see, here's the thing about that though: like you can't give, you can't like grade kids based on their uh, video quality because like. Teen, high schoolers are gonna high school. Yeah, you can still like be extra hard on them. <laughs> like grade, <laughs> grade, like grade. I like, don't be, grade yourself as if you're grading someone. Like if you're doing a thing, then you're in the same realm of people who do the thing professionally. So you should grade yourself against the professionals. Uh, you and I have a different opinion on pedagogy. Um. <laughs> that's just all there is to it uh because yeah. i i think that that's a super duper non-conducive way to grade someone but especially if they're it's a beginner level course if they're a senior or honestly if they're a soft a sophomore or junior is when you should start doing that um of a program that's dedicated to becoming a professional yeah um first year no no. First year is to is basically to teach them that they're doing everything wrong. Second year is to start building them up. Third year, break them down. Fourth year, continue to break them down. If they're still in fifth year, they still should be broken down. Yeah. If they're coming back for grad school, break them down even more. Yep. <laughs> Just facts. Uh, I have an Instagram at Mew2057. My Twitter is at JF Dunham. My website is johndumgames.com, and my email is johnacritpdcast.com. I will warn you, they are all super sad lately. <laughs> uh, our art was done by Tom Hill. You could find him on Instagram at Thomas Michael Hill. His website is cratergloryco.com, and his email is tommikehill at gmail.com. As always, I'm John. I'm Brandon. And things are going to get weird. <laughs> <laughs>